friends, it's Mr. Alex from Adams Memorial Library. I'm here with my pal Ruff Ruffman, and we've got not one, but two awesome Inquire Within activities for you today. The first activity is going to be an engineering challenge with our friends from Team Hamster. And the second activity will be some bubble art with scribbles and ink. Now, keep in mind that if you'd like to participate, you can get one of our Inquire Within bags by coming to our curbside pickup uh, while our supplies last, and you'll definitely want to try to get your hands on one of those. But if you don't, a lot of the materials for our activities this week are things that you can find around your house. So definitely uh, follow along at home, whether you have one of our Inquire Within bags or not. Now, as I mentioned, our first challenge is going to be an engineering challenge with our friends from Team Hamster. So let me show you what we need to get started and get designing. Alrighty. So as I mentioned, we have an engineering challenge from our friends at Team Hamster. And for this engineering challenge, what we're going to try to do is build the perfect ramp to take this ball from our ramp to a target that's about six feet away. Now, your ball may look a little bit different. Uh, if you have one of our Inquire Within bags, it may be a different color. And if you're participating from home, uh, you may be using a different ball, and that's okay. But like I said, our goal is to build the perfect ramp that takes this ball to our target. Now, in order to build this perfect ramp, we're going to need just a few supplies. So let me show you what I gathered, but you can use anything that you can find at home. So I personally am a big fan of snacks. So I went to my kitchen after I'd finished up some groceries and I got things like this cereal box and this egg carton to make some pretty cool ramps with. I also gathered things like toilet paper tubes as well as some tape to hold it all together. Now for my ramps, I used duct tape to build them, but you can use any glue or other types of tape that you think might work particularly well. So go ahead and gather all your supplies and we'll start building. Alrighty, I know I said we were going to start building, but as any good engineer will tell you, the first step to building a really great project is to imagine and plan. So instead of just taking our boxes and taping them together and cutting them up, uh, we wanna have a plan for what we're going to do to be as efficient as possible. And so what I did was I took a piece of paper and I thought about what makes a good ramp in my mind. So for instance, when I think of a ramp, I think of our ball starting at the top and rolling down it to the bottom. I think of it having maybe like a 90 degree angle here in the corner as well. Um, and as far as how we're going to build this ramp with our 90 degree angle and the ball starting at the top and going out of the bottom, I thought that maybe it could be made of cardboard. I really think that that cereal box or uh, another box like it could be a really good ramp. And of course, uh, Miss Karen and I love using tape, and I think we're gonna use some tape to hold the ramp together at the bottom uh, of the cardboard. So I have a plan, I've imagined what a ramp looks like to me, and now we truly can start building. Alrighty, so now that we've imagined and planned, our next step is to create. We're finally gonna get to build a ramp. So for mine, what I did is I built my first ramp by taking a cracker box and using the, de the designs that we made to create a ramp that looks like this. So for this ramp, I just took a little bit of tape and I put it on the end here and I took my cracker box and I cut the sides off so that I can pinch the front and turn it into a ramp. And I think this is gonna be a pretty good start. So let's take it down to our course with our starting line and our target and see how close we can get the ball to our target. Hmm, unfortunately, that ramp didn't work out very well. It didn't get our ball very close to the target. But the good news is, is that we just completed the third step of our challenge to test. So we tested out our ramp and we saw what happened. And that means that it's time for the fourth step, which is to reflect. So we're gonna take what we learned from building this first ramp and use it to build a second, even better ramp. So some things that I noticed as we tested our first ramp is that the ball didn't go very far. Um, it needs to go a lot further to get close to our target. And in order to do that, I'm going to make a hypothesis and say that we probably need to build a ramp that's a little bit higher. Uh, so that's the first thing that I wanna change. The other thing that I noticed as we were testing our ramp is that the ball really just went off to the side. It didn't really go straight toward our target. So I think I might wanna put some guide rails on our second ramp in order to guide it right on target. And keeping that in mind, I took some duct tape and I took another box and I built this ramp here. So on this ramp out of my cereal box, I did the same thing. I cut the sides off 
and took some tape so I could pinch the front into a ramp. But this time I took a box that is just a little bit higher. So you can see this box is a little bit thicker. And I think that that's gonna give our ball some extra speed. And I also added these guide rails here so that that should hopefully guide our ball right down onto the target. Let's take this down to our course and test it out to see what happens. Darn, we, we still didn't do very well and that's okay because sometimes science takes a lot of testing and a lot of reflecting to get it right. So even though our ramp did work a little bit better, the ball didn't go quite as far off into the wall, um, it still didn't go quite far enough. So while I was down there, Miss Karen gave me some helpful advice and she said, why don't we try building the ramp even higher? And I think that's a great hypothesis. So what I did to fix that problem is I took some styrofoam and I made this bar here. And I think if I take this styrofoam and put it under our ramp, I think it's gonna give it the exact amount of height that it needs to put the ball right on target. The other thing that I wanna try is I wanna try moving our ramp to the side. I notice that the ball keeps going off to the one side, and I think if I move the ramp over, it'll help us get closer to the target. So let's improve and make those changes and see what the results are. Let's head down to the course. We did it. We finally got the ball right on target. Now, I may have completed my challenge and engineered a ramp that works really well for me, but now it's your turn to do the same thing at home. So don't forget, you'll need to imagine, create, test, reflect, and improve to complete your Team Hamster Ramp Challenge. Some other things to keep in mind is that you can add extra challenges uh, or extra people to make it a little bit more fun. You can have a time limit. Uh, for instance, you could say you only have 15 minutes to build your ramp, uh, or you could add other people and make it a competition to see who can get their ball to go the furthest, to get closest to the target, or any other challenges that you might want to do. So definitely uh, build some really awesome ramps out of some awesome materials, and let us know how your ramp turns out. <laughs> we can't wait to see them. So as I mentioned, we have not one, but two awesome Inquire Within activities for you today. If you've already finished your ramp challenge with our friends at Team Hamster, or you're just looking for something a little bit more artistic, then you'll definitely want to check out this bubble art inspired by our friends Scribbles and Ink. Now, there are a couple of different ways to make bubble art, and the first one I'm going to show you is using actual bubbles. So I used some colored bubbles here to create this bubble art, and it's a little bit hard to see on camera, but I think it looks really awesome. However, it is also very, very messy. So we're not going to make any bubble art here in the studio, but I am going to show you what you'll need to make your own bubble art at home. Keep in mind, as I said, this is a very, very messy process. So after you're done mixing up your bubbles, you'll want to take them outside and get an adult's help to make your own bubble art. Let me show you what you'll need. Okay, so in order to make our own bubble art using our bubble mix, we're going to need just a couple of things. We're going to need cups or something else to mix our bubble mix in. We're going to need some actual bubbles. Um, and so I have a bottle right here that we're gonna use. We're going to need some food coloring in different colors that you wanna use. I've chosen red and blue uh, that I wanna use here. So I have my red and I have my blue. Oop. And we need something to mix with. So I have these two plastic forks, but you could use a popsicle stick, a spoon, anything that you have at home. Just keep in mind that the food coloring will stain a bit. So that's why I'm using these paper cups and these plastic forks so that when I'm done, I can just throw them away. Finally, we're also going to need our bubble wand to blow our bubbles with and some paper to blow our bubbles onto and make our own bubble art. The final thing that we're going to need that I didn't talk about yet is I have these paper towels laid down and when you're mixing your bubbles and when you're making your bubble art, you definitely want to cover whatever surface that you're using because you will wind up getting something on it and we don't want to ruin any good tablecloths or surfaces that you might be working on. 
And that's why at the beginning of the video, I definitely recommend making the actual art outside and with an adult's help. So in order to mix up our bubbles, we're going to take two of our cups because I have two different colors and we're going to set them like this. Then I'm going to take our bubble mixture and I'm going to put about half of it into each of our cups, just like this. Alrighty. Once I have some bubble mixture in each of our cups, I'm going to take that empty container and set it aside, and I'm going to get our food coloring. Now again, food coloring will stain very easy, so it would be good to get an adult's help with this, and you want to make sure that whatever surface you're working on is covered. I'm going to take our first color, red, and I'm going to put about eight, or maybe even ten, depending on how dark I want my colors to be, drops of food coloring into the bubbles. Five, six, seven, and eight. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same with our blue food coloring. So I'm going to add one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight drops of blue food coloring as well. And at this point, our food coloring and bubble mixture looks a bit like this, and so it needs mixed. I'm going to take my fork or my other mixing implement and I'm going to stir them up until everything is nice and even. And then our bubble mixture is going to look something like this. Now, as you can see, my fork is very blue right now. And so I don't want to set that anywhere near our tablecloth or anything else that we want to stain or that we don't want to stain. And that's why I have it on my paper towels. Then I'm going to take my other fork and I'm going to do the same thing with my red bubbles, just mixing them up until everything's nice and even. When that's done, I'm going to make sure I set the fork down onto my paper towels so that it doesn't stain anything. And we're going to have something that looks like this. So now our bubbles are ready to go. We can take our bubble blower and our paper. We're going to go outside with our bubble mix, and then you can take your bubble blower, dip it, into each of the colors of your bubbles and blow those bubbles onto your paper. After you've blown them onto your paper, you do not want to disturb your bubbles. If they pop, that's okay. Um, but don't pop any yourself, just let them sit there until they pop. And then as they pop, they'll create designs on your paper and you'll get bubble art like I showed you at the beginning of the video. Now, I mentioned at the start of this section, that there are multiple ways to make bubble art. And so the second way that we're gonna make bubble art is with everybody's favorite, bubble wrap. So in order to use bubble wrap to make bubble art, we're going to use it sort of like a stamp and uh, make some of our own designs. So let me show you what we need and we'll go ahead and get started. So for this method of bubble art using bubble wrap, we're going to need some of our bubble wrap. We'll need some little pieces of cardboard, some markers, some scissors, and some tape. So. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our bubble wrap stamps. Now, I've pre-cut my pieces of cardboard like this, but you can cut your cardboard into any size stamp that you want. The bigger the stamp you make, the bigger your pattern is going to be. The smaller your stamp, the smaller your pattern is going to be. And so once I have this piece of cardboard, I'm going to take our bubble wrap and I'm going to line it up so that I cut a piece of bubble wrap using our scissors that's about the same size as my piece of cardboard. And then once I have that piece like this, I can use my cardboard as a guide to trim it down. Alrighty. Then I want to take my bubble wrap and I'm going to flip it so that the bubbles are facing out and take a piece of my tape, roll the piece of tape and put it in between, oh, in between the cardboard and the bubble wrap, just like this. And so now what I've done is I've essentially created a bubble wrap stamp. I'm going to go ahead and repeat this for each of our three colors so that I have a different stamp for each color that I'm using. Let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty. So now that I've created our three different bubble wrap stamps, I set the other materials aside, the extra bubble wrap and the extra cardboard, and it's time to use our stamps. So in order to use our stamps, we're going to take our markers 
and the bubble stamp, the bubble wrap stamp that we want to use for that color. And what we're going to do is we're just going to color the top of our bubble wrap. And by doing so, it's like inking a stamp and it'll give us something to transfer onto our paper. So let's go ahead and do that. Alrighty. So now I've taken our marker, I've covered our bubble wrap stamp, and we're gonna place it face down where we'd like it on our paper. We're gonna give it a good press without popping any of our bubble wrap. And we're going to gently lift it up. Once we've done so, we should have a bubble wrap pattern on our paper. Now, for this particular project, I think I might want a little bit more green. So I can take our marker, I can add more green ink to our bubble wrap stamp, and stamp it again. Alrighty, so now that we have our stamp covered again, we're gonna place it face down. Press gently without popping our bubbles. And gently lift up, revealing our bubble wrap pattern. Now, in addition to green, I may also want some red. So I'm gonna set our green stamp aside for now, and then I'm going to grab another stamp, a fresh one, and I'm going to cover that in red ink and go ahead and stamp that. Alrighty, once we have our stamp nice and covered with some of our marker ink, once again, we're gonna take it, put it face down on our paper, right where we want it, gently press without popping our bubble wrap, lift up, and see the pattern that we've made below. Now, finally, we have our last color, our blue, and I'm gonna repeat this process of covering our bubble wrap stamp with ink, pressing it on our paper, and adding the blue where I want it in my artwork. Okay, so finally, we have our blue stamp ready to go, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place that right on our paper. Give it a good press without popping our bubbles. Gently lift up. And there we have it. We have some bubble wrap art. Now, this art isn't completely finished because something that is incredibly fun that you can do is you can take a black marker and you can draw over your bubble wrap art once you've let it dry a little bit. Now, for those of you who follow Miss Karen's story times or we reads, you may notice that this bubble wrap art that I've created already looks a little bit like one of our friends that sits behind us in the studio. So I'm gonna take my marker and I'm going to make this look like our friend, the Very Hungry Caterpillar. So maybe we will have a head for our friend, the Caterpillar. We'll have three body segments. A few feet. Some antenna. Some eyes. And a mouth. And while this isn't quite as nice as Eric Carl's brilliant artwork, uh, it is my own version of our friend, the Very Hungry Caterpillar, using bubble wrap art. Scribbles and Ink would be proud. So don't forget that um, you can use this with your bubble wrap, and you can definitely do some experimentation as well. You can use larger bubble wrap for a larger print. You can use smaller bubble wrap for a smaller print. Or you might even want to try other materials, such as markers or paint or other things that you find around the house that you think will transfer onto your bubble wrap stamps. So definitely try it out um, and let us know what combinations work for you and what awesome characters you create. Friends, we have had so much Inquire Within fun today and it all wouldn't be possible without our friends from Clearview Federal Credit Union and WQED. So we wanna give them a big, big thank you. Now, if you participated in today's challenges or made your own bubble art, Definitely send pictures of your projects over to us at kids at adamslib.org. We'd love to see them. And don't forget, follow the library on Facebook, 
Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, not only for updates about further awesome Inquire Within programs, but also to learn about other things that we're doing here at the library. I hope you had fun and see everybody next time. Thank you.